Have you ever wondered why kids are not allowed into R-rated movies alone? Or why there are age restrictions to purchase cigarettes? Children receive these kind of protections because society believes it's important to shield them from adult content and harmful chemicals. But it goes even further than that. The research is showing that a child's brain is more sensitive to sexually explicit material. Teens who drink alcohol experience rewiring of their brains, which make them more likely to become addicted. Likewise, exposure to pornographic images actually changes a child's brain. This is why our youth are entitled to special protections from adult content. I am a dentist by profession. If a kid needs a filling, I numb their mouth. I use a smaller dose of lidocaine because they are smaller. Similarly, an adolescent or child's brain has different characteristics than an adult brain. I would like to tell you about a remarkable young man named Smith. He was innocently exposed to pornography at the age of nine. He clicked on something that randomly popped up on his screen. I want you to think of a nine-year-old that you know. Maybe it's your own child, a grandchild, or a niece or a nephew. What kind of words come to mind to describe them? I think of innocent, vulnerable, not able to recognize or protect themselves from harmful materials, dependent upon parents and other adults, a blank slate for learning, and entitled to the joy of childhood. Smith's world was no longer innocent after this unwanted exposure. He was not exposed again until sixth grade, but then became addicted. Smith calls pornography isolating. It caused him to walk away from real relationships, including with his own family. In his own words, he states, when you look at something fake for too long, you start finding fault with what is real. He says pornography greatly decreased the quality of his life. It hampered his ability to concentrate and focus. His mom commented that looking back, he was more difficult to live with during this period of his life. This continued for five years without his parents knowing. Finally, his addiction to pornography was exposed and he received the help he needed to crawl out from the dark place he was in. After Smith re received the help and support he needed, he wanted to help others. To become an Eagle Scout, a considerable project must be completed that gives back to the community. Smith's project brought awareness to this issue. He shared how he was able to overcome this problem and let kids in the community know what help was available for those who were struggling. I now quote from this Eagle Scout. Pornography causes pain and loneliness. It hollows out the soul and ruins lives. I am the mother of five boys. Their healthy development is top priority to me. After you have your first baby, you feel like you can protect them from everything. It doesn't take long for this dynamic to change as they grow and then become a teenager. Cell phones have changed the way kids live. As a teen, I remember talking on the phone in the kitchen with a cord connected to the wall. Now, our kids carry around a mini computer with access to limitless information, including sexually explicit material. I felt a deep sense of responsibility to learn what my kids were up against, so I started researching. I studied several articles from peer-reviewed journals over a period of five years and compiled a paper that was recently published in the Journal of Adolescence. I collaborated on this project with Dr. John Wisco, a neuroanatomist from Boston University. I will now discuss three aspects of the adolescent brain that are different from an adult brain. The first part of the brain is the prefrontal cortex. This is the thinking part of the brain. It is located right behind the forehead, which is why it is also referred to as the frontal lobes.
When we are doing things that require skill and concentration, we are using our prefrontal cortex, playing musical instruments, writing, doing calculus, or putting together a puzzle all require the prefrontal cortex. This part of the brain allows us to feel empathy for other people and to create relationships with them. It also makes us aware of the consequences of our choices. Adolescents have an underdeveloped prefrontal cortex compared to an adult. In fact, it can take into the mid-20s for this part of the brain to fully develop. In contrast to the prefrontal cortex is the basal ganglia. The basal ganglia is responsible for risky and impulsive behavior. The basal ganglia also contains the part of the brain that responds most to pleasure. If you think of the brain in terms of a car, the prefrontal cortex would be the brakes and the basal ganglia would be the gas pedal. I know a teenager who took a longboard and duct taped it to a garbage can. He started down a steep road using a hockey stick to propel himself forward. He quickly realized he didn't have any brakes. He crashed into a parked truck, split his head open, and received a concussion. Teenagers are known for doing risky and impulsive things because of the developmental stage of their brain. Knowing this may help you have more patience the next time your teen announces they want to sleep on the roof. As we become adults, these two parts of the brain become more balanced. The next aspect of the adolescent brain is its ability to undergo neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity means the ability of the brain to change in response to influences. Kids are much more adaptable than adults. Their brains change more easily in response to their surroundings. Weightlifting can be used as an analogy. If a person wants to bulk up their biceps, they would lift weights and exercise regularly. Over time, their muscles will become stronger. Conversely, if a muscle is not used, it will atrophy. My brother broke his arm when he was a kid. When the cast was taken off, his arm looked smaller and weaker than the one he had been using. If teens' brains are regularly exposed to influences that bulk up the basal ganglia, it will cause the basal ganglia to become more dominant. This will further weaken the prefrontal cortex. It's important for kids to do things that stimulate the prefrontal cortex. This is one reason I have put so much emphasis on piano lessons at our house. Playing the piano is a great way to exercise the frontal lobes. Reading is another way to exercise the prefrontal cortex. On the other hand, hours of screen time and video games bulk up the basal ganglia. Violence, high levels of stress, any form of abuse or neglect, illegal drugs, and viewing sexually explicit material all feed the basal ganglia. The final aspect of the adolescent brain is its overactive dopamine system compared to an adult. Dopamine is a substance in the brain that allows brain cells to communicate. It is unique in that it causes pleasure all the way up to euphoria. When we do things that we enjoy, dopamine is released. I have friends that love to ski. Can you picture yourself skiing down a snow-covered mountain with a beautiful blue sky? If you love to ski, can you imagine the feeling of pleasure you would have? Dopamine causes that feeling. Are you familiar with the term the runner's high? Dopamine causes this natural high. It is also responsible for craving. Craving is the desire for more. We've all had days where we crave a certain food. If the craving is strong enough, we're willing to drive miles out of our way to get it. Because dopamine causes craving and pleasure, it is to blame for addictions. Have you ever noticed how sporting events are more exciting for teens? Food seems to be more delicious, speeding in a sports car is more invigorating, and jokes seem to be funnier. 
Sexually explicit material is also more stimulating for teens. The saying that teenagers are a walking ball of hormones are, is actually quite true. Their higher levels of dopamine caused heightened pleasure and even stronger cravings compared to an adult. It is harder for teenagers to walk away from this kind of material. Remember, adolescents have an underdeveloped prefrontal cortex compared to an adult. Sexually explicit material will further weaken the prefrontal cortex and bulk up the basal ganglia due to neuroplasticity. The natural balance between these two parts of the brain can subtly change because of inappropriate material. This will impact many aspects of a teen's life. Take school, for example. The ability to concentrate and pay attention will be hindered. Homework will be even harder to get done. As a mom of five boys, I'm telling you, homework is already hard enough to get done. Mm. Another area of impact is behavior. A bulked up basal ganglia teen will be more argumentative, short-tempered, impulsive, and difficult. Teenagers aren't exactly known for their ideal and rational behavior anyway. So sexually explicit material will compound these behaviors. Another critical area of impact is the ability to make meaningful relationships. Teenagers are in the process of learning how to connect with people. The prefrontal cortex is essential for empathy and connecting with other people, including our family members. Exposure to sexually explicit material during this critical period of development can derail their ability to make meaningful relationships. It can skew the way teens view others, resulting in people becoming nothing more than objects. Quality relationships are the key to emotional health. Pornography robs teens of this essential key to happiness. These exact feelings are what Smith described when he was addicted and struggling. Kids like Smith and millions of others are worth going to bat for. Our youth are entitled to special protections from adult content because their brains literally change in harmful ways by what they see. When they become adults, what they view will be their choice, but the research shows that an empowered basal ganglia and overactive dopamine system don't give kids like Smith a fair chance to avoid involvement or addiction. We must live in a society that views the violation of our kids' rights as intolerable. The rising generation is truly our greatest resource. Protection from sexually explicit material will help them to reach their full potential. <laughs>